everybody, and welcome to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know that you will find inspiring, engaging, and interesting. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Today, of course, is no exception. You know, I always try to find the best people and the funnest things to interview. Have you ever thought about buying your own home or selling your house? and have no idea what it takes to do that, how much you need, where to go, and by this time you're pulling your hair out, I know that feeling. Today I have your answer. I want to introduce you to my friend, Annette Serrano. That's right, hot and spicy like the pepper. She is a real estate agent with Keller Williams, and she has all the information we're going to need to sell and buy our homes. Annette, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Ricky. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you, and thank you so much for saying yes. There are so many people in that right now who are looking to sell a home, because you know how summertime gets, people, school is out, people start changing jobs, and they're looking to either buy coming into the city, or sell to move out, or sell to move across town. What is it, as a full-service realtor, that you actually do? So I do exactly what it says, full service, from concept to beyond. So even when you're thinking about it, I'm not really sure what to do. Do I need to do repairs? Do I need to just sell it as is? Whenever that pops in your head about your house, that's when we need to have a conversation so that you could be okay with the different options available and choose the one that's perfect for you and your family. Now you say options available. What kind of options are there? What do you mean? So to sell your house, you could either do the repairs beforehand, depending on the age of the home. I might uh, recommend doing a home inspection just so that we could get most of the health and safety items out of the way and already show to your, the potential buyer, we've already had this in mind. We are definitely doing our due diligence. We want to make sure that this is as smooth as possible. Okay. I, I didn't know that. And I've sold like two houses you know, moving around, being a military spouse. And some of this stuff I did not know. Like, for instance, when you're talking about doing the home inspection, you can either do the home inspection yourself and have the paperwork done or working with a realtor, you all have inspectors that you use as well, correct? Correct. So I don't necessarily have to find my own. No, and you could definitely have your own if you already have a relationship with an inspector, but I will give you at least three people, whoever you're comfortable with, the pricing you want to go with, whoever it is, it is your choice. It's your home. No, that's true. So now when you're talking about selling your house, how do you know how much your house is worth? Well, Texas is a non-disclosure state, so that makes it very, very easy, which means everything that you see on the internet is incorrect. So with a Wait, non-disclosure, stop. You I mean know. <laughs> the internet is a lie? What are you talking about? A little bit. <laughs> so because we are a non-disclosure state, the people who are involved are the only ones that actually know what's happening. So that's your agent, the title company, the lender, and the buyer and the seller. That's it. Everybody who says they saw it on a website and this and that, well, where did they get that information from? because we're a non-disclosure state. So it's only these people who know. So it's really, really important and vital to use a realtor to be able to give you that information so that it's accurate. You could get assumptions and estimates through online, but do you wanna assume with your money or do you wanna be as correct as possible? That's where we come in. Wow, I have learned a new thing. This whole thing right now has already saved me a, probably a million dollars, you know. You know, and I say <laughs> that because, you know, it's our house. We all think that our homes are worth a hundred million dollars. And, you know, shame on the fool who will not purchase my house for a hundred million dollars. But to hear that things on the internet are not true, that's kind of surprising. At least for 12 states, it is absolutely true all the other states are open book and you could definitely find anything online but for texas it's a definite you need to for sure get a professional and you should definitely get a professional for whatever if there's a profession for it chances are you have to go to school for it chances are you don't want to do it on your own because you're not going to do it as well as someone who has been doing it all their life or at least been taught to do it right. you're not gonna pull your own teeth when you're an adult you'll do it when you're a kid because you still have time to fix it so <laughs> it's the same thing get a professional diys look great on pinterest but when you do it yourself 
do you really, are you happy with the results or do you want better results? Wow, that is so huge. Now, with that being said, what kind of licensing would you need as a realtor? So realtor and a real estate agent are two different things. So we still okay. have the same processes. We still have to do the courses of becoming licensed and that you have to do six different courses. And okay. after you do those six courses, you're actually a real estate agent. You are approved. You're ready to do real estate. Now you could either do one step more, which is what I did and became a realtor. So that means I am a part of the association of El Paso. So it's the Greater El Paso Association and we are needing to do certain classes for ethics. We have codes that we need to abide by so that we are at a higher standard. So you know that our integrity and what we do is for you ultimately. And that is the bottom line. It is your interest. We uh, support your interests and help you get to the goal that you need to get to. Wow, that, I mean, that's amazing. Cause I know for me, because I'm not a realtor or a real estate agent, I would not know that there was a difference. That being said, right. what's your thought about, you know, people who love, I wanna do it myself. What would be your advice to someone who, you know, I'm gonna just sell my own home. What would be your advice to them? You absolutely can. But how many times are you busy with your life? How, do you need to be there to show? Yes, it's your home. You have access to the house. If you work with a realtor, we have the different options available to make sure that your house gets opened, whether you're there or not on vacation, you're living your life. And we actually give you all the documentation that protects you as well as protects the buyer to be able to do things accordingly. So even if you sell your own home, you still have to have what's called a seller's disclosure. So you, the seller, have to disclose whatever information you know about the property. Where are you going to get like, that information? Like it's stuff like where the dead bodies are buried type stuff or what? <laughs> yes, where the dead bodies is a little bit important for sure. <laughs> but just any, any knowledge that you've had, when was the last time you replaced the roof? Did you replace the roof? Have you had any plumbing issues? Um, one thing in, uh, that's very surprising is, was there ever a meth lab in the home? Because that's I'm sorry, wait. Way. Was there ever a meth lab? I'm talking about dead bodies and you're like, was there a meth lab in your home? So there's a lot of aspects as you can see. Yeah, I guess so. And if there was a meth lab, do you really want people to know that? I mean, I don't know. I, I, Wow. So you do have to be as honest as possible. And that's the whole portion of the seller's disclosure. If there was, you need to say it. Hey, it's what it is. You can't change it. But then that also means, okay, do we need to get a special inspector? Do we have to do certain things? Does this buyer have asthma? Whatever the situation is, oh. doesn't mean it will not sell. It mm -hmm. just needs to sell differently than everybody else. That's okay. all. Wow. So what about when it comes to the money of um, selling your home? I know there are different options that you can use to um, get money to buy the home. But when you're talking about selling your home, is there, is there a cost involved in selling your house? There is, and there's always cost involved, whether you're buying or you're selling. So one thing that people are misled is sellers have closing costs and buyers have closing costs. And what that means is just money that needs to be happen in order for the transaction to close. What that entails is taxes, your principal, your interest, all the things that you have already been paying as well as the realtor fees. So with the seller in Texas, the seller pays for the agents. So the seller pays for the listing agent, which is the person helping you, as well as the buyer's agent. So we actually have to split with the other agent across the table because we, we work together. If it wasn't for buyer's agent, we would have been able to sell your house. So it is a little bit more fees, but if you've, we've done the numbers and we talk about, you know what, what do you want in your pocket? What is going to help you get to that next stage in life? Why are you selling? Mm -hmm. Let's get to that number as close to it as possible. And let's make sure the market supports those numbers and right. we'd be able to move forward that way. Wow. You know, this is just so interesting, but here's the thing I want to know. What's the difference between a good agent or realtor and one that is questionable? How do you find a good one? 
For me, I think it's someone that you feel comfortable with, someone who really knows your values and what you want. Because in all fairness, anyone could buy or sell a home. Can you do it with integrity? Can you do it with the right mindset? Is it just a house for them? Because I know it's not a house for you. You lived in it at a certain point in time. Real estate is very, very emotional. So you have to be mm. able to understand that as well. If you lived in the house and it's your family home and you're like, hey, I have to sell it because you know I need to be closer to family, but my mom was here, my sisters were here. You need to be able to take care of that person as well. You can't just say, well, get, get used to it. We're gonna sell your house. That's unfair. And you yeah. have to be able to reflect with that person and be able to lean on them mm -hmm. as a person. And mm -hmm. that's part of the full service is, I'm just not here because I'm here right. until you kick me out of your life. And I absolutely ad adhere to that. It's just, right. what, what would you like? Okay, mm -hmm. this is what you want. Now, the, your goal is to move to California. After you move to California, I'm still going to call you. I'm still going to wow. see how you're doing. I'm still going to be a part of your life because wow. it's not just one transaction. Real estate happens in people's lives when you don't expect it. You mm -hmm. get divorced, you get married, uh, there is death in the family, people move mm -hmm. out, you need a downsize. All of those things happen and sometimes right. we're not aware of it and we can't prepare for it. So oh I wanna God. be there in every stage of your life and be able to give you those different options available so that you are more prepared yourself. That is amazing, you don't think of that, you know, cause people when they're selling their house, you're right, all those things are going on but so few of us think of that. I remember you and I had a conversation before because we were looking at, you know, maybe uh, moving ourselves and you were asking me questions about what do my kids think about us <laughs> selling the house? I thought that was so funny because for those of you who don't know, I don't even like my kids like that. And if they don't pay nothing over here, I don't care what they think. But it made me laugh because what you're saying is true. There are people who would really question whether or not they should sell because of what their children might think. Correct. God bless those people. On that <laughs> same note though, have you ever had like a nightmare client to sell a house? I would say no, because we really? have that conversation. Are you really telling the, the truth? So all your clients are fabulous. You've never had a nightmare client? The only nightmares are the ones that I have when I dream. That's it. <laughs> Those are the only nightmares. Uh, you're always going to have challenging times. I'm not saying that there aren't challenging situations when you're selling a home. Sure. There's going to be challenges, but it's also how you think about it. I'm a super optimistic person. And as long as you give me the problem, okay, is it a real problem? Are we making it bigger than what it is? Mm -hmm. Because is it going to be worth it? Is it going to be worth talking about how negative this is? Or can we have an action plan? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is really crappy options. I absolutely agree with you. But these are the options that we have available. Let's try to make the best of it. What are those options? And be able to move forward. Because we can't control everything. Even in real estate, we cannot control everything. There's a lot of other parties involved. Mm -hmm. What I'm concerned about is how you're taking everything. Is it going to be stressful? Yes. Not everything is going to be silky smooth. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to do this. And the only way we could do it as positive is doing it together. It's an absolute partnership. And that's where the communication comes into play. That's where you have to be comfortable and transparent with who you're working with. Because if you're afraid to tell your agent certain things, what are they, what's going to be the results? If they don't have all the information, are the results going to be what you want? No, because they don't have all the information. So all the information, good and bad, great. Now let's work through this. Okay. Wow. That's so easy. you are more like counselor, doctor, spiritual oh, yes. advisor, big sister, and stalker. Because <laughs> I'm going to stay with you yes. forever. <laughs> and I that, am that there until you amazing. kick me out of your life. <laughs> yeah. I, you would never think of that. You all don't worry. If you guys love Annette and you have other questions <laughs> that you need to ask her, all of her information is going to be down in the description. I promise you will be able to find her. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment because we really want to hear what your thoughts are on this interview. But Annette, before we let you go, we have to play our game. Let's play. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. this game is called This or That. 
I'm going to give you the choice between two things and you, off the top of your head, tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Yes. All right, here we go. Android or iPhone? Android. Read the book or see the movie? Read the book. Wallflower or Life of the Party? Wallflower. <laughs> I am surprised, really? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Summer fun or winter wonderland? Summer fun. Yeah, me too. Eat to live or live to eat? Live to eat. Oh, yes. It's so much better, right? It is. Outside in nature or in the house? Outside. Yeah, me too. Coke or Pepsi? Oh, Coke, but not even Coke either. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Drive the car or ride in the car? I like to, ah, uh, I guess they ride because I drive all the time. So okay, I want to ride in so. the car. Yeah, I don't blame you. I like sports <laughs> or I don't care? I don't care. <laughs> okay. And finally, Annette, when you were in high school, what was your first job? Ooh, I was a bingo caller at a retirement home. Wow. Okay. That is a whole nother interview that we're going to have to talk about that. I love it. I'm good Annette, with it. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you and your expertise. This has been fun. Yes, I absolutely agree. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time on Extra. Mm -hmm.